Hello there. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Colleen Klimczak, organizational coach and certified professional organizer. I own Peace of Mind Professional Organizing, LLC. Since 2003, I've been helping my clients live better lives through organizing and organizational and productivity coaching. In addition to organizing and coaching, I support my clients with a weekly newsletter, a weekly accountability and productivity session through professional speaking, blogging, and podcasting. Want to finish strong with me this week? Join me for Finish Line Friday every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Central for a two-hour productivity session. Drop me an email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or follow the Zoom Room link on my Instagram or Facebook page. So I have made some changes in the last few months in my company and I have more coming. So I just wanted to kind of plant the seeds on that. I have been tagged on social media so often, which is awesome. I'm so grateful to all of my people who have worked with me over the years and who um, share my name when someone on social media asks about organizers. Um, So super grateful. And I also want to kind of plant some seeds um, for you all to know that in addition to in-person organizing, I am switching more to the organizational coaching component. And so if someone comes up with, uh, I really need time management skills or productivity help or things like that, keep me in mind for those posts as well. I'm recording this episode a few days after daylight savings ends. And this time of year, I seem to always talk about sleep hygiene. So I think we can all agree that sleep is beautiful. I love sleep. Um, It's essential for optimal performance and health. It gives our bodies time to rebuild and our minds time to process stimuli. It is warm and soothing and lovely unless it's not. So there are lots of ways to not get enough sleep or maybe not the right sleep. And we talk about insomnia, but honestly, that's just one little way that our sleep might be negatively impact. We all struggle at different points in our lives to get enough sleep or get good sleep. I personally have always had a hard time falling asleep. So I have a a way to start a conversation like an icebreaker in a funny way. And that is to say, you know, there's two types of people in this world and that's kind of leave it hanging and then say the ones who quickly fall asleep and the rest of us. And I am certainly in the rest of us, but we all can be challenged from time to time or in different seasons of our lives. So, you know, teenage and young adult years, maybe at school or responsibility or personal choice that keeps us up late at night. Um, And uh, maybe we just have different priorities, right? Um, And there's actually something to be said about our circadian rhythms. Teenagers and young adults, their bodies are actually wired at that stage of their lives to sleep longer and be up later. Um, It's just one of those things the research has shown us, um, but it does make it difficult for us in different seasons if that is not necessarily what the rest of society wants us to do or, right? So if the kids still have to get up early for school, even though that's not what their uh, bodies are telling them, that's still the case, okay? Um, You know, parenting young children who are up a lot. And then I have found parenting older children whose schedules still differ from mine and are not quiet, right? So those are different times of my life personally. Um, Several times of the year, I have the privilege of teaching a time management component for a career readiness program at two local community colleges. And I love teaching those groups, but they are in career readiness programs for construction. And we talk about sleep hygiene because they're probably going to be on off shifts, meaning Maybe they're on night shift or three to 11s. And so talking about sleep hygiene helps all of us in those different stages of our lives. So a friend recently asked me how I overcame insomnia. Um, I also was reminded that I typically talk about sleep hygiene. Um, I'm no expert on sleep, but I can speak from experience on overcoming insomnia And as an organizer, I recognize logical, objective ways to improve routines and our physical spaces. 
And truly, better sleep boils down to better sleep hygiene. And that is absolutely a time management question. So sleep hygiene is the group of routines and habits that we have around getting a good night's sleep, right? So it is just the list of tasks. And what that means for us is we can actually um, improve our sleep hygiene, which hopefully then will help us improve our sleep. I am reminded often that sleep deprivation is actually a form of torture in some countries. Um, That's a thing, right? So what happens if we don't get good sleep? In the short term, it's not that big of a deal. You know, a couple nights, maybe without such good sleep, maybe we just feel tired, obviously. Maybe we have a lack of focus. We could be getting irritable. Um, we might be lethargic, like we feel it physically, right? So that's understandable. That that That's not really a mystery at all. But long-term sleep loss can lead to a whole lot more. And... Honestly, it can lead to um, job loss. It can lead to decreased cognitive function. Um, It can lead to physical ailments like high blood pressure. Lack of good sleep can increase our risk of heart disease and inflammation. It can decrease our metabolism. It can skew our hormones. And it can also really, it doesn't necessarily cause things like depression and anxiety, but it absolutely can exacerbate Uh, the symptoms of depression and anxiety, okay? So getting good sleep matters a lot. And knowing that we can take some steps to improve it is a very hopeful thing and is also something that we should absolutely try. So according to harvard.edu, nightly we have, we alternate between REM sleep, so rapid eye movement, and that's a lighter sleep, and non-REM, which is deeper and more restorative sleep. And we cycle through those a couple different times every night. And we need both of those for, um, you know, peak physical and mental uh, recuperation. And um, our brains are actually very busy while we're sleeping. They are consolidating our memories and moving it from our, you know, short term to longer term. So all of these things happen while we are getting some good sleep. And that absolutely matters. So let's actually break it down. How to get better sleep. Let's ask the question, how does our home environment impact our sleep? So the National Sleep Foundation states that people who make their beds daily are more likely to sleep well every night. And 71% of us sleep better in a fresh smelling room. So what has been found is that a cluttered room reminds us of unfinished tasks whereas an uncluttered room helps us relax. Closing closet doors and dresser drawers further soothes us. And in addition, 75% of us uh, sleep better when we have clean sheets. Another thing to think about is if our sleeping environment is cluttered or dusty or maybe damp or has um, small buggy or furry creatures in it, um, that's also the air that we're breathing for six to eight hours as we sleep. So having a clean and less dusty and, uh, you know, just more healthy environment while we sleep, we might not know that it's any better because we're asleep, but we're breathing cleaner air. And that's absolutely going to help us as well. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, depression can cause clutter and clutter can cause people to feel tired and more depressed. So I've actually had people ask me which comes first, right? Clutter or depression or clutter and anxiety or, you know, physical clutter versus mental clutter. And I don't know the answer, but the fact that people are asking that question tells me and them that they know that there's a link and there is. So being able to sleep in a cleaner and less cluttered space is going to make them feel better, whether the, whichever direction the link works or not. And we're also reminded that individuals who live in clean homes are generally healthier than their counterparts living in clutter. And that's according to research conducted at Indiana University. So we can absolutely start with better hygiene by just clearing out our space and sleeping in a cleaner and less cluttered environment. There's other things that we can do to improve our sleep environment too. So do you know the book Goldilocks and the Three Bears? 
What we're trying to do when we are looking at our sleep environment is for it to be all baby bear. All right. So think of it that way with me. We want things to be not too hot, not too cold, not too soft, not too hard, right? All baby bear. So we think we need our sleep environment to be not too loud. So soothing music is nice if you need it, but you might want to set a timer for it to turn off. And certainly don't sleep with earphones in your ears. On the other hand, we also don't want things to be too quiet. So sometimes silence can be even more distracting than noise. A white noise machine may help, or a cool vaporizer like the one we run all winter helps to drown out nighttime noise. Um, There's actually a lot of apps available right now. Um, I use something called the Calm app, and it has uh, lovely soundscapes that I can listen to as I fall asleep. They could be anything from a gentle rainstorm to ocean waves. A person that I know who works the night shift listens to an eight-hour YouTube video of ocean sounds to help them sleep during the day when the rest of the world is up and making noise. So just know that we need things to be not too loud, but also not too quiet. In addition, we need a cool room that's best for sleeping. A cue for our bodies that it's time to sleep is a drop in body temperature. And that's why it's important to sleep cooler versus sleeping hot. So we can use that, we can know that for ourselves, and you might even notice that, that if you're sitting around watching TV, you start to get a little chilled closer to bedtime, maybe you grab a blanket, that is your body telling you that it is time to go to sleep. And so we can force that idea as well. Um, So it makes, it might be counterintuitive, but stick with me. What we can do is take a warm shower or even a hot shower before bed. What that does is raises our body temperature. But when we have cooled off, the cooled off temperature is actually lower than where we started. So we cool off even farther. And again, we can use that as a cue to tell our bodies that it's time for sleep. Um, And some of us prefer a fan to move the air around. We want to sleep with blankets and layers, not just one really heavy one. So you can shed or add the covers as needed. They usually tell people that you should sleep cold versus sleeping hot because after a while you can only take off so many more covers if the room itself is warm. So starting out with a cold room is best for sleeping. Other things to think about, um, an actual bed. So get off the couch and the right pillow. Um, I say get off the couch, but also, you know, get out of that easy chair for the three or four hours when you Uh, pretend you're watching television and actually you're just sleeping. Um, That is not a good way to get good sleep. And it's also not a good way to um, wake up feeling refreshed if we've been sitting in a chair all night. Other things to think about as we're setting up our environment, that bedrooms are bedrooms. Limit your bedroom to sleep and relaxation. So if you have a hard time falling asleep, you know, eliminate the computer or the TV or the treadmill or the workout equipment or the, you know, desk, unfinished laundry, unfinished work, right? So this is if you're feeling, if you're having a trouble getting to sleep or staying asleep, looking at all of these different areas in your space might help you to get better rest. And oh, I'm really sorry to say this, but if you're having trouble sleeping, it might be time to have your pets sleep elsewhere. I know a lot of people like to sleep with their pets and I understand that, but Those aren't always helpful when it comes to getting a good night's sleep. And then we can actually look at the habits, right? So we've looked at the environment that we sleep in, but now let's look at some of our habits. Habits are routines, right? We've talked about those before. And this is where sleep hygiene becomes a time management question. So reminding me and you that sleep hygiene is our daily routine for getting a good night's sleep. First up, we want to determine how much sleep we actually need. So you may have read articles or heard things from medical experts, and they may say that you need anywhere from, you know, seven to eight or nine or 10 hours of sleep. And that may be the case, but most of us don't need exactly eight hours a night to live our best lives. Some folks need less and some folks need more based on age or physical demands, or individual rhythms, or a host of other variables. 
I am more like a six or six and a half hour a night person. And that's okay. Um, But there are some people out there that are like nine and 10 hour people. And that's okay too. But we just need to know that for ourselves. So what we need to do is um, start with our wake up time. So imagine with me that you need to get up every day at 6 a.m. to get on to work or whatever you need to do. And so start to, um, starting with your wake up time, work back from there to find your right bedtime. Okay. So start with eight hours. So that would be, you know, 10 PM. And then maybe you find out that you don't wake up refreshed. And so you need to push that back to 930 or you're fine and you have a hard time falling asleep. So maybe you push it to 1030. Okay. But we start with the wake up time and then we work from there. Another thing to think about is that you may be actually getting more sleep than you think. And what I mean by that is, back to that mention of falling asleep in front of the television in your armchair. And there's a lot of people that I know who don't think that they're getting good sleep when actually they're napping for two or three hours off and on before they actually head to bed. And then obviously when they hit the sack, they're not ready for good sleep. So we just need to be aware of the sleep we actually might be getting. The problem with that armchair sleep is that it's shallow and it's not restorative, right? And so we want to make sure that we are dedicating time and allotting space for getting a good night's sleep. Other things that we can do to adjust our daily routine for better sleep, set a consistent sleep schedule. This is always so unpopular. I'm really sorry. (laughs) Nobody likes to hear this advice, but it's the truth. So if you have a hard time getting to sleep or staying asleep, um, set a consistent sleep schedule, even if it's just for a couple weeks or a month and see if it helps, right? That's that's a big thing. Um, So keep your bedtime and wake time the same, even on weekends. Um, Your wake time should vary no more than an hour or so from weekday to weekend. And see, that's what makes it unpopular. I know, no one likes to hear this. Um, Other things to do as we are getting better sleep, we hope, uh, during the day, exercise, but not too close to bedtime. Um, Avoid caffeine after lunch and check on your medications and foods and beverages for hidden caffeine or other stimulants. You would be amazed at all the different places that caffeine hides or how medicines like steroids can keep us awake. Another thing we can think about is our lighting. So if you have a hard time falling asleep, avoid overhead and fluorescent lighting as much as possible and certainly before bed. So turn down all your lights after dinner to tell your brain it's time to start shutting down for the night. What we do want to do too is start winding down a little bit before bedtime. We want to choose the same three or four soothing activities before bed like yoga, wash your face, maybe have a warm cup of tea or a warm shower. Uh, maybe quiet TV viewing or reading in a darkened room, right? So all of those kinds of things start to cue our body that it's time to sleep. Other things that we can do right now that the weather is cooler, you know, we know that we'll be spending time indoors so we can make our home cozier and soothing for those cold, for those colder nights ahead. We can add, you know, blankets and maybe some nice candles in the rooms where we spend our evenings. We can set up a tray for tea and hot chocolate in the kitchen to make it easier for you to have that hot, soothing beverage before bed. Um, And again, we can turn down the lights in the evening to remind ourselves, remind our body that it's time to sleep. So all of these things are ways that we can absolutely improve our sleep hygiene and therefore get a better night's sleep. So there's two other things that I do personally that I want to just mention. Um, They are both um, breathing exercises. So you can Google them. I know I've talked about um, square breathing and triangle breathing before. And so if you want to Google that, but it's really just using a, a count of four as we breathe in and breathe out. And we can do that and it helps us to kind of slow our breathing and also, you know, calm our mind to get closer to um, rest, right? And then the other thing that I like to do is something called progressive muscle relaxation meditation. I know that was a whole bunch of words altogether. Um, Progressive 
muscle relaxation meditation. So if you just Google that, you can find that too. I'm sure there's people who will walk you through that. Um, And again, I have that on my Calm app. But what it is, is using a technique to slowly um, tense and then relax the different major muscles in our body in the same way, accompanied with that nice nice soothing breathing. And, you know, before I get very far at all, um, after I, I... relax my legs and relax my arms and my hands and things like that. Usually by the time I get up to relaxing my face muscles, I'm already asleep. So if you want to try either of those two ideas, um, like I said, Google them, um, progressive muscle relaxation meditation and square or triangle breathing. So give those a whirl if you're still having a hard time getting to sleep. Okay, that was a whole lot of information. Um, I hope that you found it helpful. And if you would like to explore topics like this and coaching for organizing and productivity, drop me a line via email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or, of course, message me through any of my social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Thanks so much, and I will talk to you next week.